morning. Uh, first thing I need to do is Diane has an announcement. She wants to do some stuff here. So we decided in our youth that every month we're going to have what we are calling our angel of the month, and we nominate one of our kids. Uh, but also helping the church sometimes with maybe like taking an offering or passing things out or whatever it be. Um, and we have chose our this month's um, Angel of the Month and this month Frog gets our, send that Frog. Frog gets our Angel of the Month. And we'll announce every month which child that is um, so that y'all recognize and we can kind of get to know some of the kids that may not, y'all may not know. Thank y'all. I will volunteer to take whichever angel of the month that you choose. They can do the offering with me. That, that way they'll get to do it. Uh, the uh, newsletters are in the back of the front door. They're laying there on the chair. If you need to kill the newsletter, excuse me, kill the newsletter, uh, hit yourself. I want to thank Linda. Stand up, Linda. <laughs> Linda does that. And she does an excellent job. And I found out from her husband a while ago why she does. Because that's what she used to do for the Yellow Pages. Is that correct? She was worked in advertising. She does a good job. And we really appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. Uh, there's also uh, some questionnaires back there about the ladies uh, retreat that they're putting together. Uh, Linda's also doing this. And uh, if you pick one of those up and look it over, if you think you want to go on a retreat with them, and get with Linda, and there's some information she needs to know so that we can make sure uh, about price and scheduling. I've got a note here for next Sunday for something. What was it? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to have a love offering uh, for the uh, pastor and his family. Uh, we'll out some envelopes like we usually do, and uh, you can put whatever you feel like is necessary in there, whatever, you, whatever your heart tells you to do. Okay? Uh, as you well know, James and Tommy lost their house in a sad situation. Not, a thing, uh, not, not just one of them deals that happens. And uh, they are in a. Uh, don't, I'm not nosing the preacher's business, but I, I, they are not in a financial bind or anything, but they did not have any insurance on their home. Okay? Uh, we had a board of trustees meeting yesterday, and usually when we have a board of trustees meeting, we make decisions or whatever, and, and we already know that the church is for this or against it, whatever. You know, we, we try to, to be uh, in line with the church itself. We voted last trustees meeting to sell the parsonage that we have on 17th Street. Uh, it's really a liability to us right now. Uh, it needs some work done on it, and uh, we're having a little trouble with the rent on it, and so we, we decided to sell that. $45,000. During our board of trustees meetings yesterday, we voted to channel that money to Brother James and Tom. <laughs> that will help to get, I mean, it's not going to replace the play. It's not going to completely replace everything, but it will get them a good start on getting the house put back in there and getting everything straightened out. Uh, I think we're also uh, got some plans on demolition project and whatever else we need to do to help them. Okay? Uh, I want to commend Tony and uh, Paul yesterday. They went out there and uh, one of the, they got a uh, 
for a bit of work mother law shack next to the house there. Uh, that went back to that so that Ashley would have her place to stay her and her son. So God is your own. Amen. Do what? Dad was there also. Okay, I didn't know who all was there. Whoever was there, you did a good job. Yeah. Okay, we well, appreciate it. Thank you a lot. Yes, sir. Back to the addition of the other thing about that. Okay. Anything else? Y'all got any other announcements or anything? Okay. I guess we'll have the Jamboree with us. <laughs> yeah, Jamboree will be with us tonight as far as we know. Katie's able and willing. Ladies' luncheon is Tuesday. That's right. Ladies' luncheon will be Tuesday <laughs> at 11 30 in the fellowship hall. And we had 20. How many did we have yesterday? James 26? 27. 27. I'm going to cancel that out Tuesday. Yes. Okay. That works. <laughs> Y'all will be close enough. I might come eat. Okay. Yes. Come. Come eat with us. Okay. Hey, I am off Tuesday. I can come eat. Come eat with us. We're winners. At least we're winners. <laughs> Uh, usually I say prayer right now we're going to do something a little different today I'd like all of my trustees that are here to come up front please <laughs> all the trustees that are here today come up front please you uh, please lift up James and Tommy help them in their bad situation Lord we know that this is devil at work and this church is strong enough faithful enough that we can beat this Lord we uh, we know that with your help and uh, we've always counted on your help in this church you've always bless this church and its membership and we know that you will do so again Lord we are very thankful to you for the things you've done for us we can never thank you enough for that this is one of those situations again where the devil's at work here and uh, my words to him are devil get thee behind me because you are not going to do this to this church or this membership or our pastor we will fight you till the end of the time Lord please be with us the rest of this service I ask that you be with the emergency services people that came and helped uh, Brother James and Tommy during this Repay, and they uh, they did a fine job of uh, keeping things under control, and, and we are more than ever grateful to them for their service. Again, Lord, be there with us through the rest of this service, and especially today, I ask you to reach into Brother James and guide him in his message, and lift him up, and give him the courage and strength to do what he needs to do today. Amen. Amen. 
Lord, I ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
please, please come.
we didn't get a chance to go over this because Wayne Bob said he wasn't going to do it, and he decided he's going to do it. So now Wayne Bob's going to do it. <laughs> You sound awful confident about that. <laughs> you got this. I don't know if that sure matches hair up. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you are.
that we love you and we appreciate all that you've done for us. More than anything, the prayer that you've been praying for. I just want to say that the tears that you see today are an overflow of y'all's love. And God fills y'all with that love. And we have so much to be thankful to him for. And we love y'all dearly. Everyone has said anything. Just call. We love y'all so much. It's a very emotional day for us. I tell you this. Everybody keeps asking, what are y'all going to do? What are y'all going to do? What are y'all going to do? Well, we knew we'd take it. Right now, we're taking it one day at a time, trying to process what we've been going through, and hoping and praying that God will open the doors and show us what he wants us to do. Amen. Uh, we've had a lot of phone calls and a lot of offers for different things. Uh, people have offered their houses to stay in for a few months if we needed it. Uh, of course, we've got a good bill back here and thank the church for thanking ahead years ago, putting them. <coughs> All the hookups back here for a built bill or motor home. Uh, thanks to Brother Jack Stone. He kind of implemented that. And we kind of paid him to be parked up yard or somewhere else when we had everything here. We just needed a few other little items uh, that we could add to it to make it work. And so we were able to pull our foot pull up here. And we've got everything in our built bill that we need. Uh, the only thing that we had, thanks to ladies and that have gathered together and carried all of our clothes down to Sharon, we was able to salvage our clothes. Some of them are a little blacker than they're supposed to be, but uh, <laughs> uh, smell. They smell a little bit bad, but uh, Sharon is doing a tremendous job of getting all. We just don't know what we're going to do from here, so I appreciate you asking us what our plans are, but uh, I can't answer you, so you can ask all you want to, but uh, we can't answer you. Uh, we're going to take a little while to process this and try to get our minds wrapped right around what's going on and, and uh, try to get our, get our thoughts back together. And, and, and see what we need to do from there. And uh, but y'all's financial help has been tremendous, and uh, so we appreciate all the love offers that we've been given and received. And, and we want you to know that we received with love and appreciation beyond what we could ever take. And so we just want to thank you for that this morning. I could spend the next hour trying to <clears throat> explain how Tommy and I feel about our church yeah. and our church faith. <laughs> we had never gone through anything like this. We've been around families that had, we tried to help them and tried to be there to support them. One of the things that you think 
It only happens to somebody else. It doesn't happen to you. And we found out that that's the reality. It can happen to you. You can be the one. And so don't ever underestimate what the devil can do in your life or what things can happen because sometimes he can change things to a point that he'll make or break you. And I promise you, he's not going to get the victory in him. Amen. Amen. We may have a few setbacks. There may be a few boxes of tissue that we have to go through to get to what we need to be. But we're going to get there. Amen. With God's strength, God's help, and your support. Amen. We can't do anything but win. Amen. That's right. uh, I, I don't know how this is going to work out this morning, but uh, if you have your Bible this morning, I want to turn to the book of Galatians, please. Why God laid this on my heart, I don't know. But somebody asked me, that we you able to save your Bible? There's a young man that works for the fire department that I have been inviting to church and trying to get him to come to church. As far as I know, he doesn't go to church anywhere. Uh, but he was at our house and a little bit he come out of the house and walked over to me and handed him my bottle. Oh, oh, And he said, Preacher, I think you'll make this. And I said, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> it. It got a little bit of a smell to it, <laughs> but it didn't change the word. Amen? <laughs> it didn't change the word. So Galatians chapter 5 this morning. And I apologize for all this cleanness, but that's just the way it's going to be. Galatians chapter 5, beginning with verse number 1. I know that's not very good, but. Yeah. <laughs> Notice the very first part of how Paul starts this off when he's writing to the church at Galatia. And I don't know if that's what God, God brought that to mind. Attention on why God led me to this passage of scripture, but first thing he said is stand fast. Amen. Stand fast. Amen. No matter what you're going through, no matter what the devil throws at you, no matter what kind of obstacles you come across in your life, he said, just stand fast. Amen. And then he goes on and says this, In the liberty wherein Christ has made us free. Amen. Paul was probably No matter what I was going through, they could not take my freedom. Amen. 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 Praise God. The freedom that I have with God. Yes. So he said, stand fast, therefore in the liberty wherein Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So he said, stay free, don't go back into that bondage. If we could turn the hand of time back a few days, don't you know Tommy and I would love to have done that? Yes. The first night we talked, we did the I if. What if we'd have done this? What if we'd have done that? 
And we finally said, you know, we can what if this thing to death. Exactly. But it's not going to change what happened. Right. Not going to change what happened. So when we try to think about our life, he's talking out of bondage. Every one of us at one time in our life was in bondage. We're under sin. The devil had us so much around us, so much of our life, so much destroying our life, no matter what it was with, sin or drugs or alcohol or whatever it was. Amen. God had us, or the devil had us bound yeah. to that. Yeah. But thank God one day, we were like Paul. We were on that road. And when we were on that road, we met a man named Jesus. And he told us how to be saved. He told us how to get out of that bondage. He told us how we could be free. Yes. And he set us free. Amen. And we're no longer entangled in that bondage. Hallelujah. Now I realize, and that's going to be part of our message this morning, is that we will have some struggle. Tommy yes, and I are just going through a little setback in our life. Yes. <coughs> just a little setback. Because God's not through with us yet. Amen. And we got greater things to do. We are going to let that little oh. thing set us back. <laughs> but people will get into contact with things that if they're not careful they will let that setback destroy them and completely annihilate them from the things of the world and get them back out of the place that God wants them to be. Amen. Because that's what the devil wants to do. Amen. That's why he works at you. That's why he throws all these things at you. That's why he puts you in a company of people that you don't belong with trying to get you to get away from the things of God to not do what God wants you to do. So Paul is writing this letter and he said, you were in bondage, but you can't be free. You were free. So why are you trying to stay in that bondage? So then he asked a question. Now I'm just going to skip on now to verse number seven. Second time this morning, because I promise I'll try not to let you be here more than a couple hours. Right. But verse number seven. We won't look at it this morning because I think that makes a world of difference when it comes to our freedom when it comes to our bondage, when it comes to things that have set us back in our life, whether it be health, whether it be finances, whether it be uh, some other things in the world that have set us aside. Notice what he said in verse number seven. You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey I want we thank you so much for this time that we've had together today. And Lord, I, 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 God, I need you this morning. I need your preaching grace. Lord, I need liberty. And I, but more than that, I need the Holy Spirit, Lord, to fill our heart this morning. God, that we can put everything else out of our mind this morning and just concentrate on your word and preaching what God you want us to preach this morning. So, Lord, I ask you to take me, mold me, make me a vessel fit for your use this morning. And, God, may I speak your words just exactly the way, God, you want them to be spoken with. And, Lord, I pray that everyone here will be receptive to it. And, Lord, that everything that we do and say today will point for that most important part. And that's your invitation this morning. So, God, just bless the reading of your word. Bless your message and your messenger. Because it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. He said, You did. And you know your English very well. What does it mean, did? Something that you already done, right? Yeah. I mean, you could change that you done. If you were from Redneck, Texas, <laughs> <laughs> you did run well. But something 
hindered your life. Something changed your direction. Changed your thought. And worse than that, it'll change your habits. You know, people sometimes they say, well, you know, they hadn't, so and so hadn't been in church in a while. You know, you get out of a habit of going to church. People will, things in the world, things in your life, will hinder you from church today, and I'm not going back anymore. We don't do that. We do it a little at a time. <coughs> but something will always cause you to do that. The virus thing that we fought for, God seems like the last 20 years on it, whatever it is. Do you know it has destroyed churches across America? Amen. Because people were afraid to go, afraid to get out in the public, and they got comfortable sitting on home in their pajamas, eating potato chips, and watching the Sunday morning service on TV. You know, all churches closed because of it. And there's a lot of people not going to church today because of it. All they say, well, you know, uh, we're going we're, we're to come, preacher. Uh, we're just kind of trying to get over this and make sure everything's going to be okay. It ain't never going to be okay because you make up your mind it's going to be okay. Yeah. 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 You're not coming because you don't want to come. That's right, yes. Yeah. It's just a matter of bottom line. It's not a matter of whether you don't feel comfortable or you don't feel safe. You just don't want to come. I know that sounds too hard, but when you look at what God's asking us here, Paul is saying you did run well. What hindered you that you should not obey? And going to church, folks, is a commandment of God. Yes, it is. It's not a suggestion from this preacher. God said, do But there's some things that hindered our life, and I'm just going to give you two or three of them this morning and hope we can get through with them. But the very first one, it, it seems like it's insignificant, but yet it has so much power when you stop and think about it. The lack of enthusiasm. How many of you enjoy coming to church? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, some of you need to tell your face. It's not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's how simple it is. And I don't mean that truth. I, I, I didn't see anybody like that. But. If you're happy, y'all are sure. What's the song the kids, kids say? That's right. You're happy you know it. Amen. It's when you're not happy that it shows. Amen. I mean, when we get mad, everybody knows it. And when your wife gets mad, guess what? You know it. Nobody has to tell you. Nobody has to call you or send you a text on that phone and say, I think you're mad not. Your wife's not. And have, happy with you. Uh, I've already sensed that. <laughs> and when mama ain't happy, nobody, nobody, nobody is happy. Amen? Amen. Amen. But when a person is, you know, I, I love the stories in the Bible that God used. When someone 
got saved. How did they ran? They didn't walk, they ran. Amen. To tell others. Amen. Come see a man that told me all things whatsoever I did. It's not this to Christ. Exactly. I mean, they were excited that they accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. Yes. If we could get just a that much enthusiasm and excitement in this church house as they do at a football game, Amen. we could we could tie the walls off this building. But where's our what happened to our excitement? You know, you got saved years ago and you were excited then. But somewhere along the line it did be calling something else that you did in your life. Any more serving God is just routine or you do it out of habit or you do it because God, I got up this morning and I got to go to church. It's Sunday. <laughs> Instead of getting up on Sunday morning and saying, Thanks to the Lord, this is the Lord's day. And we, we can go to church this morning. We can serve God. We can hear some beautiful music. We can enjoy the worship of God and sing in praises unto the Lord. Amen. But something hindered that. What did you lose the joy of your salvation? What did you lose the joy of fellowshipping with other Christians? What came between you and really getting excited when somebody walks down this aisle and, and accepts Christ as their Lord and Savior? Everybody in this church ought to stand up and holler, Amen! Because that ought to be a great That person's going through something that you went through and you felt the excitement. Now you want to share that excitement with that person. We lose our enthusiasm because things hinder us. And then when you lose your enthusiasm, guess what happens next? You lose your dedication. No longer are you dedicated to God. No longer are you dedicated to the church. No longer are you dedicated to one another. I would go as far as say this morning, and I, I have no statistics on this. I have no Bible scripture to back up with it. Uh, this it does say as a preacher now. I would eventually go and say that when a person loses their enthusiasm and excitement in their marriage, the next thing that happens is they lose their lack of dedication to that marriage. Exactly. And when they lose that, guess what happens? The next step is divorce court. I know it's hard for you ladies to wake up on every morning and look over there at us and think, man, I'm excited I married this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you might have been 15, 20 years ago or whatever. But now that we got old and gray and some don't have hair anymore and uh, you know, uh, we, we've got, every one of us has come up with a furniture disease. You know, our chest doesn't fell in our drawers. Uh, you know, if we just don't have that physique that we once had, uh, that's going glamour. But, you know, if you really love somebody, Not only do you change and see the change in that person's life, but you change with God, no matter what it was. God sent you aside for definite use. Now something hinders that, and you're no longer doing what God wants you. Like dedication. 
lack of prayer. I know that Tommy and I have received way more prayers than we could ever hope for. Amen. Since all this stuff has happened. I had a phone call, had one this morning from another pastor friend here in town. He said, our folks want to know what they can do. And I said, number one, just tell them to pray for me. Because I believe in the power of prayer. Amen. And I believe God can change things when a person really gets in fear, puts everything else aside and begin to ask God to do something in their life that he wants them to do. But somewhere along the line, you were, you thought about praying, but something hindered you, and you didn't try to forget it. Folks, every day of your life, no matter what you're going through, you should take just a moment when you wake up in the morning and thank God that you're here. Amen. Some folks don't wake up that way. I can thank God this morning that through all that we went through the last few days, I thank God that me and Tommy are here. Amen. It could have been a lot worse. But no matter what you're going through, always think of it, it could have been a lot worse. But because somebody's praying for you, somebody loves you, somebody cares, you can get that change. This is the last one this morning I'm going to close. <laughs> You lose your enthusiasm, you lose your dedication, you lose your power of prayer, and then the worst one of all, you lose your love for God. And that's what happens to homes is when we lose the love. That's what happens to churches and they lose the love for God and one another. A church is not just this building that we're sitting in this morning. You folks that are here, sitting on these pews this morning, you are the church. Now you've got a decision to make this morning. Do I love this church enough that I'm going to be a part of it? Yes, right. So you see, we're, when you become a part of this church, you become a part of this family. Amen. And there's nothing greater for God than the family. Amen. He loves the family. He created an Adam and Eve to start a family. He created a church in the book of Acts and empowered it with the Holy Spirit because he loved the people and he wanted to see them grow. God wants to see you grow. He wants to give you back your enthusiasm. He wants you to get back to that place where you are praying and do what ask God to do things in your life. He wants you to get back to that thing that he dedicated you to do. It may not be the sweeping the floors or, or minding the door. But if you're dedicated to doing that, then you're highly blessed by God. Because you're doing what God wants you to do. And you're dedicated to doing it. 
hard when people have to struggle to try to find things to do in their life. If you want a job, see us at the church. I guarantee we can find you a place. <laughs> but we don't need money to fill the, the pews or fill the pot. If you're not going to do it with love, dedication, and with enthusiasm. Amen. Have you lost the joy of your salvation? <coughs> See, that's where the devil hinders us more than anything. So, I'm not sure whether I'm saved or not. That's a doubt that the devil will put in your mind. Yes, it is. To try to keep you from being what God wants you to be. Amen. Maybe you're here and you never have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. You don't know what it's like to know the joy and the enthusiasm and the dedication that God has for you in your life. Until you get out of that bondage and know what it really means to be free. Amen. Free from that sin. Free from all the bondage and the things that's held you back. And to give you a new life and a new joy. And if you're here and you've lost that, somewhere along the line, something hindered you. Jesus is standing with those nail scarred hands, stretched out this morning, and said, won't you come on home? Won't you come on home? I never left you. You're the one that left me. And when you're ready, I'll be right where you left me. Would you come to him? That's all right. <coughs> so our musicians come. We're ready for our invitation this morning. God, I, I want to thank you right now for what little grace that I received this morning. I hope God is I did you justice this morning. Lord, our heart was wanting it to be in it so bad. We had a lot of things that hindered us this morning. But Lord, I pray that the result will be in your invitation this morning. God, search hearts. Lord, if there's somebody here this morning, made to make a decision for you. I pray God right now you give them the courage you give them the grace to step out and do what you want them to do today. There's one on the side of our voice, Lord, that doesn't know you they're Lord and Savior. They can't say, I know beyond a shadow of doubt if I was to die where I'd spend my eternity. God, let them come this morning and let us take the word of God and show them how to be saved today. Lord, have your will and your way in your invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. And let's thank you.
Father, we come to you at this time to give thanks for this day. We ask, Father, that you open our minds and our hearts to what we heard this morning, that 
Brother James gave the message. We ask that you be with him and Tommy as they begin to rebuild the things that they lost. We ask that you continue to guide, guard, and comfort, comfort and bless them. Continue to guide, guard, and direct them throughout the days ahead. We ask that you be with everyone here. Guide, guard, direct us. Continue to bless us according to your will. And we ask, Father, that as we leave here today, that we will take your word and apply it to our lives and to guide, guard, direct, and bless others. We ask you to give us our sins and our shortcomings. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Yeah. 